With the photo text guided edit feature, you can mask an image using text that you create within the Elements Editor. You control the font, size, and other properties, and Elements Editor does the rest. Let me show you how this works. So I'm beginning here in the Elements Organizer, and I want to find an image that I want to use that's going to appear within the text that I create. So I think maybe what I'll do is choose this image right here. I kind of like that one. So with that selected, I'm going to click the Editor button, and that's going to open this image in the Elements Editor. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Guided Edit mode, and if you go into the Fun Edits category, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here, you can see that we have the option for Photo Text, and this is giving you a preview of what you're essentially doing here. So you can see the before and after. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Photo Text option, and now we can go ahead and get started. So the first step in performing this guided edit is adding text to your image. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Type Tool button. And there's two ways you can do this. You can just click if you want to, and you can type your text, but that's really just going to keep going in one single line until you hit the Enter key. What I like to do instead is I like to click and drag to define a text area in which I can put my type. I find it a little bit easier to work with, but you can experiment on your own with the different options. Now I'm gonna type some text here, and I just hit return and, and type the second line. And the idea here is you wanna use a font that is fairly bold and is gonna be easy to read with that image behind it. So typically a sans serif font, but even in the example they show over here, that is not a sans serif font. That's more of a decorative font, but it is nice and beefy. There's plenty of room for the image to show through. So I'm going to select this text, and you can come down here to the font menu and choose whatever font you wish. Impact is actually a pretty good font to use because it's nice and heavy and allows the image to show through. So I'm going to stick with that. And now we can adjust the size. So you can come down here to the size field. If you click on the drop down, you have several choices to choose from. An easier way to do this is to hover over the word size and just drag to the right to make the text bigger or to the left to make it smaller. I just find it a lot easier to adjust this way. So I want to try to maximize the space here. And then I'm going to highlight only the second line in my example, and I'm just going to increase the size of that a little bit more so that the length of the line is about the same. Now you can see how the text is overlapping a little bit. So what I'm going to do is increase my letting, which is adjusting the space between the lines of type. So I'm going to click and drag on the word letting, and that's going to allow me to increase the letting and therefore the space between the lines of copy. So that's looking pretty good here. Okay. You can also change your alignment down here. You can also change what's called the orientation as well as create warp text if you want to. I'm going to keep mine as we see here. I'm going to click the green check mark to confirm my change. And that now gives me the ability to make some other adjustments. So if I click and drag, I can move the text and kind of change what part of the image is showing through. So. I'm just going to kind of reveal more of the bottom here, kind of like the way that looks. You want to be careful if you grab one of these handles at this point and you adjust this, you're going to distort your text. So I'm just going to cancel that by clicking on the nil say sign. And then we can move on to the next step. So we also have a fit and a fill button. Fit is going to make it as big as it can to still have the image show through everywhere. Fill, be careful, this is going to distort your text. So it all depends on what you're looking for. I'm going to keep mine set to fit, and then I'm just going to readjust this a little bit more so that I now can see the area that I want showing through. The next thing you do is select a background style. You can choose black, white, or clear, which can be useful if you're going to be putting this text on top of another image. In this example, I'm going to choose black. That's going to work for this situation. And then you can also crop the image. And you want to be a little bit careful because when I choose this, you're going to notice that it didn't really evenly crop it. And, and that's really, in this case, because of the text area that I created. So I'm just going to go to edit and choose undo, and I'll show you how to crop that a little bit later on. So I'll click on the black background again. 
Then I'm going to come down here and we can choose the size of the bevel and drop shadow that's going to be applied to this. So small is going to create a, a small bevel as you see here, medium a little bit bigger, and then of course large is a very large bevel. I think I'll stick with the medium in this case. But if you ever wanted to adjust this, you can click on the advanced button and now you have ultimate control of what that bevel, drop shadow, and stroke looks like on your text. So I'll just cancel this for now. We can go ahead and click the next button. And now it asks me if I want to save it or if I want to continue editing it in the quick edit mode or the expert mode. I think what I'll do is just choose the in quick button and that'll allow me to choose the crop tool. And now I can come in here and crop this exactly the way that I want it to appear. So I'm just going to open this up a little bit. Let me make this a little bit bigger. That's pretty good. And then we'll pull this up, giving us a little bit of space at the top and bottom. So when I click the check mark, now you'll see that it has cropped my image accordingly. So now I'll go to the file menu and choose save. It wants to save it in a version set with that original image. I'm going to uncheck that because I want this to stand on its own. And I'm just going to give this a name. I'm going to call this photo text. And then I'll click the save button. And now if I click the X to close it, now we're back in the elements organizer where I can see the project that I created. So photo text is a simple yet effective way to mask one of your images within text. Give this guided edit effect a try on your own images to create your own design for your own purpose.